Hello, it is Sarah Waggle, astrologer and leadership coach here for Moon Astrology Tarot, this time for the Moon in Aries. This is January 15th through the early morning hours on January 18th. Uh, and okay, so this is Aries, which is ruled by Mars and Capricorn, both cardinal energy. Aries is cardinal fire. Capricorn is cardinal earth. So we will obviously have the first quarter moon square later in the transit, but before the moon gets to the sun, which is at around 24 ish degrees of Capricorn, it has to square off with Mercury and Mars. So <laughs> this could be a very intense moon. It's fire, which could be very motivating. It could also make people very headstrong. Very, um, I, I feel like manipulative wants to come through, uh, but it, it's also like people making choices or statements because of where they want to go and it's not in alignment with where maybe their job wants to go, their relationship wants to go. I keep talking about relationships, relationships, no matter what the relationship, whether it is with a job, a friend, a partner, a lover, a mentor, uh, uh, they either are going to fall apart or they're going to need to renegotiate. I am hearing a lot about marriages renegotiating so that people, you know, maybe the wife wants her own room. Um, and that working out. So it is possible to work these things through. And we're, you know, people who may have some insecurities, like, like the situation could just fall apart. And so maybe like it's a renegotiation of, you know, your work hours, your job, your role at your work, however that shows up for you. Um, so when I speak relationships, I'm not just talking about romance. So don't think you're off the hook. Um, if you're single, because you're not, you're in relationship with everything in your world, whether it's relationship with your home, relationship with your, <laughs> your coffee pot, right? Like all of these things you're in relationship with, you're in relationship with technology, right? As we are right on that, you know, we're right before the, the ingresses into Aquarius, but let's focus on Capricorn and Aries. I say that as much for myself as anything else. <laughs> so I really feel like things could get heated. Things could get feisty. Things could get, uh, you know, people could be firing off at the mouth. People could be, con I don't want to say confused because I mean, confusion is kind of an, a general term, common denominator for this entire year. But I think this is going to be one of those things where you could spout off and say the wrong thing in the wrong moment, um, may, or maybe you're going to say the right thing in the right moment that's going to kind of act as a catalyst to move some shit forward. So there's definitely a lot of like potent motivational energy, but I also feel like because of the state of mind of many people, it could be a lot of fighting, a lot of disagreements, um, and things like that, especially because Mars rules Aries and Mars is in Capricorn. So at some point this moon's going to square off with Mars. So squares are nothing to be afraid of, but they do require work, right? Squares kind of create tension in the Zodiac. Um, so because this moon in, in fiery Aries is going to square Mercury, Mars, and then ultimately the sun and Pluto, uh, it just could be a lot of tension there for a lot of tense conversations or a lot of tense interactions with other people. Um, maybe, and you know, it doesn't have to be a bad thing. It could be like you reached your boiling point. It could be like you reached the point where like, okay, I'm just done. I'm done. I'm moving on. I need to find something different. I need to sign, find something that fits me better. Um, find something that suits me better, that serves me better, all of these things. And this could be like that catalyst point for you. Uh, but don't disregard that this could also be like fights and arguments and things like that. So if you fight with somebody on, you know, politics or religion or all of those topics that we all want to avoid talking about, but we can't avoid talking about even money could be a thing. Um, but I feel like it could be a very intense few days, 
uh, and all of that. So because of, like I said, you know, like I've said, you know, so much, you know, so much information is being brought to the surface. It's going to create chaos between, you know, each of us. But I think the thing to remember is that, um, we can allow stuff to create chaos between us as individuals, but we have to remember that, <sighs> We need to be there for each other. And I often think that I've been thinking back to something I said in 2020, 2021, when, you know, I was basically at odds with every friend I've ever had. And I kept thinking to myself, if the world were flooded, I'm not manifesting that by any stretch, but I feel like, you know, if we do come to a point where we need to rely on each other for survival, or we need to rely on each other for well being, which could happen, right? Anything's possible in this crazy world. Um, who do you want those people to be? And are you going to be pissed at a person just because, you know, are you going to like allow a person to not help you just because they, view the world differently than you do, right? Like, I think that's just something to think about. Or are you going to deprive yourself the opportunity of getting to know someone because you don't agree with what they're doing or what they talk about or how they speak or the language that they use or whatever, right? Like, I don't know. I just feel like that's something we all need to kind of think about as we move forward is that, yeah, there's a time to speak your mind. There's a time to be your own best advocate. There's a time to have the feisty, fiery arguments. There's also a time to really pull back, zoom back and be like, am I going to deny myself this opportunity because I disagree with that person? Like, that was a case I wouldn't be living in the town I live in right now. <laughs> it's very, this is a very Christian town and I'm not a Christian, um, you know, but I have faith in God and that should be, you know, and actually uh, one of the elders of this town is somebody that I'm really cool friends with. Um, and we know we both speak a different language, but he also sees that I have a very strong faith in God. Okay. Judgment. Damn. <laughs> can't make this shit up judgment q upright <clears throat> did q deny himself the opportunity of getting to know humanity because he didn't like what he saw like he didn't you know like he he wanted to hate picard and uh the enterprise the members of the enterprise because they're human without like taking the opportunity to get to know the adventurous exploration explorationists that they were right he just wanted to bring them to justice judge and jury right i'm not saying there isn't a time for justice i'm not saying that at all but what i am saying is like are you really allowing yourself to see someone for who they are or are you judging a book by its cover um, I feel like that's something that we're all guilty of. I totally get it. I'm, I'm human too. Right. I judge people too. <laughs> um, it's something that I work on. Uh, there used to be something about if you're judging, whatever you're judging people for is the thing about yourself that you don't like. Um, I think it went something to that effect anyway. So anyway, this could be a really good time for motivation. You've gone through that whole creative, creative downloads from the Pisces moon, from the Aquarius moon. Um, and now you've got this like first quarter square moon in Aries to really work with and to really motivate you. But I also feel like the, the dark side is that, you know, we're going to get into maybe even like senseless fights over stuff that doesn't matter ultimately. Right. This example keeps popping into my head of like, um, you know, somebody I know who uses the F word, not me. I mean, I use it too, <laughs> but somebody, you know, who uses the F word frequently and somebody that they are close to like is denying themselves the opportunity to get to know this person 
for who they are and the fun that they have and the the personality that they have because they say the F word. Like that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. It's like, are you denying yourself the opportunity to get to know somebody because they use the F word? Like something superficial like that, right? Like I realize the F word offends people, but is why does like I don't understand why it offends people, but that's not the point. If it offends you, it offends you and I apologize. But my point is, is that are you really going to say that something is bad because some of something superficial like that, right? Even though like that person has fun and and enjoys themselves. Um, and I feel like sometimes we can all get like hypercritical about, you know, something like the F word and overlook a person because they use the F word, right? I see it all the time with, um, there is an astrologer who drops the F bomb like every other sentence and people get all up in his grill. Like, can you stop using the F words? Like, no, you know, and I'm just using the F word as an example. It could be anything. Like maybe you, you know, who knows what you judge people for that's like silly. Like maybe you judge people because they drink coffee or, you know, judge people because they don't drink coffee or maybe it's the type of coffee that they drink. Like, right. It's all the same thing. These are all like superficial things, but is it, is it really a, I have a really great friend who loves Starbucks. I don't love Starbucks. I'll drink Starbucks. It is not my favorite coffee or place to even be. But am I going to judge this person because they like Starbucks? No, because they're still a great person. But I also understand like Starbucks is a great place to go and get work done. So there's that. Anyway, I hope that's making some sense in all of this. So the oil that we have is <laughs> how appropriate patchouli, right? The oil used by a lot of hippies. Um, let's see. We've got uh, lightened and lightens and eases worry. Yeah. So if you're feeling like particularly stressed out, that's why a lot of hippies use this because they don't want to like stress. They just want to like, don't worry, be happy. Right. But I do love patchouli. I do love the component, the fragrance of patchouli. Um, again, you, you know, this is something you can use as an oil. You can use it as an incense, um, as a fragrance or whatever. Uh, but I do love patchouli because yeah, it does like give you some chill vibes. And if you're not a fan of patchouli, put on some chill vibes music. Sometimes it's kind of like go with the flow type of music. And this really could be a time to be in flow, go with the flow and just be chill and be relaxed and all of that. Um, so anyway, that's what I got for this moon and Aries. We do have it, you know, just, just go with the flow. All right. Thanks for tuning in. Of course, check the links below. Uh, it being the first quarter square moon, I fully intend to have the Leo new, Leo new moon, Leo full moon forecast up for you uh, by the time this first quarter square hits. And so please be attentive to that. I will post the link to that when I have it. Of course, you can watch the 2024 practical tools video that I have posted here and all of that. You can book with me. You can see, you know, listen to my um, guest appearance on the Hearts Unleashed podcast. Um, and of course, if you want to book with me, not only as a, a support person, but if you would like to have me speak to your group, I am open to that. Um, in person would depend on location. However, virtual is always an option, of course. So um, if you love what I have to say and want to hear me talk more, <laughs> I love talking. So it's not really a problem. <laughs> um, um, it's something that I do enjoy doing is public speaking. So anywho, all the links are below for all of that. And thank you for tuning in. I'll talk to you on the next one. Bye.